Hi everyone, welcome back. Just another update for you. We're going to look at uh, a Google Slides add-on called Poll Everywhere. So Poll Everywhere, one of the activities will look something like this. Basically gives you lots of different polls that you can use during your Google Slides. They're interactive. Your students can respond to them and it just helps to make the lesson a bit more interactive rather than more of a lecture. So, like I said, it's an add-on for Google Slides, and you can add interactive polls and quizzes into your slides and presentations. Um, you can use it to group students. There's a really fun poll that I'll show you in a second that's a good way of putting students in groups. Um, so, you know, some students are always like, oh, I don't want to go with him, I don't want to go with her. This is a way of just getting students to group themselves uh, without too much argument. You can use it for icebreakers and warmers. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Um, it's good for use it for revision, actually. So uh, particularly this one. Uh, it's really nice if you need to revise vocabulary or particular terms um, because all of your students can add in different words. Uh, and then they can see it interactively on the screen, which is really nice. You can use it for brainstorming. Again, this one is quite nice for brainstorming different ideas. You can have competitions, there are true and false polls, there's Q&A or Ask Me Anything. There's tons of different ones you can use and they're really good. You can now also have some self-paced activities for asynchronous classes or homework as well. And it's nice to get some lesson feedback as well. At the end of the lesson, you can do a poll and see how many people enjoyed the lesson or what they'd like to have more of in their lessons. Uh, so these are really useful and they're super easy to use and it just makes your lesson a bit more fun, a bit different really. So let me show you how it works then. Okay, so I'm on my Google Slides now. Uh, once you insert it, so just Google poll everywhere, uh, Google Slides, and then you can just download it from that page. And then once you insert it, it will actually already be on your toolbar, so you don't even have to go into add-ons. You can just go poll everywhere here, and you have it here. So I'm going to show you this from uh, my screen while I'm presenting. Okay, so let's present this to you then. So this is what one of the presentations will look like. So this one is for grouping your students. Okay, so the way I've done it is uh, it will say vote for your favorite superhero. You can do this for anything. It could be your, your favorite color or your favorite food um, to be counted as part of a team. So whatever one they vote for, that will put them into a team. And the way that they vote, you can see up here, it says respond at this website or text uh, this thing to this number. Now, I actually tried using this number here and it didn't work. It said that the number was invalid. So I would suggest going to this uh, website here. So I'm actually going to do this now and you'll be able to see me doing it in real time. I've got my phone here. So I'm going to go to this website up here. So you don't need um, an email address or anything to do this. You just put the website in which I've done here, you can see it's loading. So I've gone on that website now and you can see that from my phone, it says here, vote for whoever to be part of that team. So I'm just going to click, let's say I'm going to go for uh, Iron Man over here. So that's what it'll look like when your students do it. Um, and then it will just say response recorded up here, you can see. Okay, so let's make me small again. And then up here, back on my uh, poll, it says I have two results now because I did this uh, just to check that it worked a while ago. Um, and then up here on the right, I can say show responses. And there we go. I've got 50% uh, Iron Man and 50% Wonder Woman. And then if you've got 30 kids in a class, they'll all do that. And then you can say, okay, Team A, Team Iron Man, this is you, you, and you. Uh, and you can see who has done it. Um, so as long as the kids put in their name and they don't put um, on your settings, you can see here, you can actually um, say that they can respond anonymously. Don't, because obviously that 
takes away the whole point of putting them in a, in a team in the first place. Okay, so that's one of the polls. Um, the next that I wanted to show you was for brainstorming. So this will, will be what it looks like. It will literally just say food. And you will have to give the instruction to um, your students. So just say, okay, everyone, I want you to write as many words for food as you can think of. It's a good way to play categories as well, or categories. It's quite fun. So again, they'll just go to that um, link that I just went to, and then they can start typing in responses. So let's say if I go to that link again. So you can see it here. I've just gone to the same link, and it will say food here, and I can type in my responses. So let's say I write my favorite chocolate. So I've written chocolate there, hit submit. And then that will say enter. And if I go back to my poll, you can see that it's added here. So now I'm just going to keep adding. And imagine you've got 30 kids in the class, so you're going to have quite a lot of responses. Um, let's say pizza. I'm super healthy, as you can tell. So, okay. So this is me adding. I'm actually doing this on my phone live. So chocolate, pizza, um, oranges. Mm. Donuts. <laughs> I'm not saying a very good example here, am I? Okay, broccoli. Let's do something else. Okay, and then it will keep adding. And again, if you've got like over 10 people, you'll have a lot of words. Um, so this is really good either for brainstorming or for revising. You can do so many different things with this. It's really nice. Okay, so that's the other one I wanted to show you. Okay, and the last one is for icebreakers and warmers. So that could be something like this. It could, could just be a random question. So what are you looking forward to most after quarantine? So it could be anything, could be any question you want just to kind of get a discussion going. Uh, and again, you need to go to, it's just the same link every time and the link will update with a different question or whatever is on your presentation. So again, if I show you, so I haven't even touched my phone. My phone's just been next to me here, and it's already updated to that question. So I can just type in any response that I want. Uh, again, so you can see me here. So let's put um, traveler. Okay, and then I'm going to hit submit. And then if we go back, you can see it's got traveling. And then I can enter as much as I want. Um, again, up here on the settings, you can say uh, one response per participant if you want. Um, but let's say traveling, seeing friends, submit, and then it should pop up there. Yeah, there you go. So seeing friends, uh, fresh air, Going to the beach. Okay. And you can see that in real time there. So that's what you'll be getting from your students, and your students will be able to see everyone's responses too. So that's what it looks like. That's just a few of the options that you have, and now I'll show you how to work it. So let's take a look. Okay, so we're back to my Google Slides. So this is just my dummy to show you. Um, so again, go to Poll Everywhere, Type in poll everywhere, Google Slides, uh, and then download the add-on from there. And then whenever you want to insert a slide, just click poll everywhere and go new, activity. And it will show you all the activities. Now, they have tons of activities. They're amazing, actually. So you can have multiple choice questions. I love the word cloud. It's really fun. Um, you've got competitions, so you can even have leaderboards. That's really nice, especially for controlling behavior. If you want to get points and stuff. True or false questions. You've got open-ended questions. You can rank something. So if you're doing which is the most important to you. Uh, if you're doing geography or something, you can make them click on a map. You can do Q&As. It's just amazing. I absolutely love it. Okay, so let's take a look, for example, at the team. So here, you've got teams by color. So you can just keep it, just click on it, and then you can edit it. So your new activity is ready, so go edit, 
So I did superheroes, right? So you can just literally say, vote for your favorite superhero. To be counted as a member of the team, and then you're going to have to delete the things here. The only annoying thing about this is, um, is that you can't get uh, an image. You can't search for it from the web from this app, which is a bit annoying. So you can only do it from your already downloaded files, which is a bit frustrating. I mean, I've already downloaded them, but you would have to go and download all the the images that you want, which is a bit frustrating. But So just go um, add option and then upload any uh, picture that you want and just keep doing that again and again and again. Okay, there we go. So we've got all my options there. Here, as I said before, you can limit responses per person. So I just want one, one response because it's their team. I'm not going to let them, you can, I'm not going to let them change their answer. That's really important when you're doing teams because obviously if they see someone else's response, uh, they're going to, oh, no, I want to be on that team. So just click that they can't change their answer. It's just easy. Um, don't let them do anonymous participation again because it takes away the whole point of the activity. And I would say turn text messaging off and just say from the web. Okay, uh, and then hit save. You can also change visual settings as well. So this one's like this, and it will come up uh, horizontally, but you can go for a column chart if you want. You can do a, a donut chart as well, and you can have different themes. You've got dark theme, color schemes. Um, you can have different uh, backgrounds. So you can change quite a lot of stuff to make it much more um, personalized. And then go save, and when you're done, just hit insert slides. Uh, and then you've got an instruction slide, you've got a result slide, and then you'll have a lock slide as well. Um, so this is your default, your result slide. Uh, I'm going to go for this one just to show you. And then hit insert slides again. Okay, there you go. So you can see that that's... Uh, inserted there, and if I present it, so now again I can go to this website and type in, and it will show me the the results there. So this is your instructions page, and then when you want your results, you'll flick forward to your results page, and then you have a, a locked page as well to show the final results. Okay. So again, if you if you want to insert something, just go poll everywhere, new activity. Um, have a browse through. They've got so many really interesting ones. The icebreakers are quite nice, actually. Uh, so you've got like check-ins, you can build connections, you can get feedback. So these are really good for like starters and warmers, uh, which are quite nice. Um, and you've got little small discussion activities, which you can do as well. If you want to start a debate, and you've got all your blank activities, which you can use as well. So just go ahead and have a play around with it. It's really, really useful, and it just helps to break up the lesson a bit if you're doing quite a bit of talking during your lesson. Uh, and your students just get to interact a bit as well, which is nice. Um, so that's everything for Poll Everywhere. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to have a browse around the rest of my videos for teachers, or you can buy the full Google extensions for online teaching course at the link in the description, and there's a special discount for my YouTube followers too. I'll see you soon. Bye.